Time has come to engage in preventative action and to move forward and go after stalking more forcefully than we have in the past. It's a truly significant crime that we need to do more about. It is uh, one that creates phenomenal fear and unfortunately seems to be one that is growing in terms of the violence directed at its victims. The American uh, police profession over the last 15 years has truly embraced the concept of community policing. We can't do it alone. We need to partner up with other professionals in the criminal justice system and the hospital system and with the communities themselves and the people that we serve. It's a constant fear, it's a constant worry. It's being anxious, it's not sleeping. It's sitting in your own house, the place where you should feel the most safe and yet not feel safe at all. For the first time in my life, I was really afraid for my life. At their worst, the hangups were over 70 a day. I couldn't get phone calls in, I couldn't make phone calls out. I was constantly looking over my shoulder I was looking around corners, around trees. You, I think, begin to feel that you have no place to hide. He's always there. It's a great county. It's got a lot of beauty to it, a lot of history to it. Within just a few minutes of being outside of the major city of Troy, you're in nice farmland with beautiful views. It's a nice place to live. I'm uh, Derek Pyle. I've been with the Rensselaer County Sheriff's Office for 11 years now. I'm a lieutenant here, and my administrative duties cover problems like domestic violence and stalking. Oh, all right, so I'll see you after the roll call. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You can't paint a rosy picture of the situation. The average stalking case, according to the 2001 study from Department of Justice, lasts 1.8 years. No law enforcement agency right now can possibly have all of the resources to really satisfy a criminal case. So that's where the task force really comes in handy. Having a multi-agency collaboration and really getting the community stakeholders involved is huge. Just to managing the case, managing victim fear, and getting a full context on what the situation is. The best way to combat stalking, we believe, is to bring people in from multiple disciplines, from law enforcement, from uh, advocacy roles, and actual victims themselves. Have them come to the table if they're comfortable doing that and telling their stories. And, and working on solutions to their, to their problems. I wouldn't expect my officers to have the answer to every question. They don't have to be an expert on stalking. They just need to know that the law is in the book, where to find the book, and more importantly, to know that there are experts in particular fields that they can talk with. Well, stalking and domestic violence just, just exists in, in so many instances, and, and we need to be open to, to see it not being aware of the issue, not being aware of what stalking is or what the law, how the law can be applied, makes it a little more difficult to do the job. I see a lot of law enforcement here. I would say that probably among you, you've probably got what, about a couple hundred years of law enforcement experience? Maybe 300 years of law enforcement experience in this room? How many stalking charges have we ever made? None of what I'm going to say is to, to mock you or insult you in any ways at all. It's just the idea that the message has not gotten out. In my opinion, the most dangerous person that you're going to come across is the person that knowingly violates an order of protection. When somebody violates an order of protection, what do we know that we've got already? We've got a stalker. Because we know that there's this, this behavior over here that has allowed this order of protection to be issued, right? And now we've got something that violated that order of protection. What do we got? We got a course of conduct. In dealing with stalking, again, is kind of a proactive approach to law enforcement rather than the traditional reactive. So really we're trying to plan what the next step is going to be and head off that stalker before it gets to the next deadly step or violent step. The New York Anti-Stalking Task Force is a group of people that are committed to work together to combat stalking. 
The task force has no budget. We do not receive any money. We do not receive any grant funding. Carmen, did you want to oh, yeah. start with the new case? The yeah, I, I just have this interesting case that I just indicted and it's going to be coming up for trial soon. And I, I, I just wanted some feedback from everyone about problems that we might run into in trying to prove this case. Basically, the facts are there's this guy, an older gentleman, who was convicted of sexually abusing his granddaughter. And he went to jail for that. And the judge issued him an order of protection directing him to stay away from that child. Well, he goes off to jail, serves his time, gets out of jail. First place he goes to is back home. They end up arresting him a day or two later. They find him in the area. They got a warrant for his arrest. And he's charged with stalking. Because it's not like a classic stalking like most people think of, right. you know, strangers and this happening, you know, within like over a long, long period of time. You think the jury's going to look at it and be like, well, it's not really stalking. They would have to be afraid of the sex offender coming back. Is it, there's a pattern of behavior overnight, right? All right. Yeah, two days. Two days are involved. That, that's what would be going through their head was, what's this guy going to do? He's back. I think the reasonable fear part is, is, is not that difficult. You know, clearly the child in reasonable fear that something's going to happen to her, and the mother is in reasonable fear that something's going to happen to her child. The criminal contempt looks solid, and the first based on not only the stalking, but also the menacing. So you if you have a room of 40 people, and these are their careers, they specialize in victim safety or law enforcement, you have an enormous collective institutional knowledge within that room. While he was in state corrections custody... In within the stalking task force, we have probation, and we have DA, and we have advocates, and we have people from the schools and hospitals. So now the officer, when he's faced with a situation he's not entirely comfortable with, he can now reach out to people that do have the expertise within that narrow band. Some very good ideas, very good suggestions, and arguments that I can make to the jury. Thank you very much. It's not just another meaningless meeting or group that your boss tells you you have to be a part of, you have to attend these meetings. We all want to be here because we care about stalking, and we know that it's a big problem. I get a great sense of satisfaction when I come from a meeting like that. Deep down, I feel, well, what I went through was worth it uh, because there have been so many changes within the community. It's not just a, an advocate group, nor just a law enforcement group, but it's a cooperative effort of law enforcement and advocates and DA's offices and corrections. Police officers appreciate this collaboration once they're able to get started. Now they realize that they have resources at their disposal through other agencies, and other parties that are willing to help so that we're not just addressing the actual crime now, we're trying to help the stalking victims with every aspect of how this event is affecting their life. Stalking is a crime that uh, we know a lot about. It's a crime that we can have great success at dealing with. But I think at this particular juncture, the sense is that it's growing and we really need to refocus our attentions and priorities on dealing with this crime. Good news is that there's no shortage of partners who want to step up. We've got district attorneys who understand the need to address these issues. We've got no shortage of oftentimes not-for-profit groups that uh, are out there that want to get involved. Please can't do it alone. Can we be the uh, one of the trumpeters, uh, basically uh, heralding that more needs to be done, certainly, and we intend to do that. And uh, we are also saying we want a partner. We, we need help in this area. And working together, uh, maybe we can have some of the success that we've had in other areas of crime reduction in the country.